All right, Evan, welcome back for another episode of Carnivore Trades. Today is Thursday, November 18th, 2021. Lots of games being played so far today. Uh, take a look at the S&P here, finishing up three tenths of a percent. NASDAQ, the big winner of 1%. But intraday, look, it was all over the map. You can see volatility via the VXX here, up, down, up, down. And we had this uh, pretty sharp sell-off in the first hour. Then we had a V-shaped recovery, um, just a, like a short covering rally. This is all just OPEX games. And if you guys remember in the uh, beginning of the week, I was talking about um, some of the pot stocks. We're just looking at the MJ here. I said that they're probably going to pull back a little bit this week. Um, same thing with like the meme stocks. There's a lot of call buying in this market right now. And it would make sense for the institutions to want to wipe those out. If you take a look here on the uh, option chain, Sundial, for instance, look at 222,000 calls um, expiring tomorrow for a dollar. And they are all going to expire worthless. Um, and look at the put side. There's almost nothing there. Um, and they hurt. Let's take a look here at uh, Sundial. So they pumped it up to a dollar and then everyone wanted to chase. And now it's pulling back. You see the same thing on, you know, Tilray, um, CGC, all the pot stocks. There, uh, you can you just just take a look at them. Look at the calls on Tilray. We pretty much dwarf the calls are the uh, on the put side. But um, all these calls are going to expire worthless. So there's just a lot of games going on right now. That's where we're getting that whippy action uh, intraday. Um, in other news, we had in video reporting earnings. Um, so that stock did gap up. That is hitting a max move of mine. Um, so this one is getting really top heavy um, AMD as well that also gapping up in sympathy there um, And you know to be fair, you know, they've had a they had a really blowout quarter But when you have such a run up like they've had um, it, It's It's harder for the stock to perform. Yeah, you can get an initial knee-jerk reaction initial pop out of it But usually there's gonna be some sell the news type of move and if you look on the in the intraday um, look at how they were selling right in the first candle here, and then there was continued institutional selling um, that took place immediately after that. You see the same thing on AMD. Look at the, the sell volume here versus the buy volume, and both of these names finished lower than where they opened. Still finished green on the day, but did finish lower than when they opened. By the way, the SMH semis, that's printing a hanging man there uh, on the daily time frame, so that could be a potential reversal signal. Um, for the semiconductors, you know, not to say that they're going to crash or anything, but, you know, they are getting really long in the tooth and really extended. And um, at the very least, you'd expect some type of profit taking here, especially on the big names like AMD and NVIDIA. Um, big movers today, Apple having a huge day here. Uh, got through this resistance area, printed a fresh all-time high. I do think it probably pulls back tomorrow. Um, this is a double top here on a weekly close. Um, but a close above that would be you know, pretty bullish there for Apple, but, um, you know, up 3%. Not often you see a stock like Apple up 3%. Another big winner today was Amazon, 4% here. This will have resistance around 37.10. Um, but for right now, just a really nice uh, juice there today for Amazon. And I've talked about this before. I like this monthly pattern here on Amazon. You got the uh, 20 moving average finally catching up to price, this long consolidation. Um, so I think Amazon can go higher, and it, it actually reminds me of uh netflix which i talked to you guys about months ago and i said same thing really um look at those lines but you have the same kind of pattern that's why i said i turned bullish on netflix back in june and july i said hey 20 moving averages starting to catch up and this is back when everybody said oh forget netflix it's laggard it's not doing anything um you know just just discard it and then of course you know a couple weeks later it starts to take off so amazon is actually in a nice technical position here um now a few interesting things i want to point out so we have the triple Qs looking like they want to break out here. Now, if I had to hazard a guess, I think we would have a red close tomorrow. Um, just OPEX related stuff. But um, they are looking like they want to push through this upper trend line, which would probably trigger a blow off euphoric move. Um, however, at the same time, you kind of have the same pattern here on the IWM in the sense, excuse me, the same patterns on the IWM, TNX and Bitcoin. Um, I tweeted this out earlier. It's strange that we have rates looking like they want to break out so we got up to this resistance pulled back now we're uh in position to push through that bitcoin same thing um trading off the same kind of pattern the higher yield iwm same kind of deal so it is interesting that the triple q's are looking like they want to break out even as rates are looking like they want to break out so that is something you know that's a bit of a distortion that we need to keep an eye on there um you know there, there's definitely 
something a little fishy here um it's because it has to be one of them is lying either rates are lying and and uh the iwm's lying and bitcoin's lying or the triple q's is lying um it's not likely that they would all uh rip higher together unless we really had a true euphoric move where everything just goes up you know even uh, at and t will get a bid that's actually your indicator if at and t gets a bid that's how you know we're in a blow off move <laughs> but uh in any case so uh, let's take a look here broker dealers um finishing negative so and the same thing with the Chow transports although they did come off the lows so a little bit of a mixed bag here um as the market did finish positive we did have some uh underlying weakness uh jp morgan was lower same thing with the xlf again with the lower yield that is to be somewhat expected here but again it's opex week it's very hard to you know make too much out of it um we also have next week which is the holiday week so we're closed thanksgiving and Friday, we are open for a couple hours up until one o'clock. Um, the Thanksgiving week of trading is notoriously boring. It is notoriously a snooze fest. And you definitely don't want to over trade yourself because, you know, there's just the big boys are not there. Usually by Tuesday, there's just no volume in the market. And we already have a very light volume market right now as it is. Um, what did we finish at today? SPY, 48 million shares. So very light volume market. We want to give the market the upside bias in these instances. Doesn't mean we can't have a sell-off, but until we see some type of sell signal, um, we, you know, and especially going into a holiday period, you want to give the market a little bit of an upside bias. Any case, um, I think that's about all I had today. Um, keep an eye on those rates and, you know, we want to watch Bitcoin and the IWM for clues. If the IWM can hold this and start to uh, push off of here it probably signals a rate breakout um and we you know the triple q's there you got to watch this divergence if this starts going up with rates it's going to signal a major change because this is not typically how things work but any case um you guys take care have a great rest of your night and i will talk to you tomorrow